Uganda has been described as one of the worst countries to be in if you're gay. For the past two years, the Parliament of Uganda has been considering capital punishment for Ugandan citizens who are homosexual. The Kill the Gays bill seeks the death penalty for gays and lesbians in the Eastern African nation and imprisonment for people who fail to report to the authorities anyone who is gay. The pending legislation has received condemnation from around the world, with President Obama calling the bill odious. Last year, one of Uganda's gay activists was found murdered. Here's an excerpt from that report. On January 26, David Cato, a gay rights activist in Uganda, was found murdered in his home. He was one of the founding members of Sexual Minorities Uganda and considered a father of Uganda's LGBT rights movement. The 46-year-old teacher was bludgeoned in the head with a hammer just three months after a Ugandan tabloid published his name and photograph exposing him and 100 other Ugandan citizens as homosexual with the headline of Hang Them. The murder happened 15 months after a bill was introduced into the parliament of Uganda calling for the death penalty of homosexuals. The worst violence comes when a government institutionalizes hate into law. The Ugandan government is about to do just that, and we cannot allow that to happen. We will stop the violence. It will not happen. We will stop the violence. No more gays, no more lesbians, and no more transgender people, queer identified will be killed in your country if we have anything to do with it. 18 hours after he called me, 18 hours, David Carter was dead. Melanie Nathan is known for her international human rights advocacy for LGBTQI asylum seekers, kill the gays bill in Uganda, corrective rape issues in South Africa, and equality activism in the U.S. I'm very pleased to have Melanie Nathan here in the studio. Melanie, thank you very much for coming all the way down from Marin County to talk about this. Thank you, Raymond. I really appreciate being here. Thank you. How does a mother of two in San Anselmo, Marin County get a Ugandan member of parliament <laughs> to actually call her up long distance? <laughs> Activism and blogging. You know, it happened when I had written a report which reached Uganda saying that David Bahati had been escorted out of the United States after a visit here. Many of us were really angry that he was even allowed into the United States. He did appear on Rachel Maddow's show talking about the anti-homosexuality bill. And I had received information that he was politely asked to leave at some point and that he was escorted out. Um, we were a little upset that he was escorted out because we had hoped to protest him being there the very next morning, but he left. And so when I wrote the report, he called me and he told me it was not true. He was not escorted out. And that was the start of his and my relationship, which has endured for about two years. I've debated him on radio and he used to call me once a week. Like my dad would call me for the Sabbath. He used to call me and say, how are you? How are the kids? And we would try and convince each other of our respective um, situations on this. Tell us briefly what has happened in the past two years since this bill was introduced. Yeah. The bill has gone into parliament a few times and never been passed. You can say it's languished in the Ugandan parliament. It never passed because there was such a huge international outcry. And I would say that there was a lot of interference with the bill, much to the displeasure of the Ugandan parliamentarians and certainly to the displeasure of David Bahati. But now it has been reintroduced in this current session of parliament. And um, so it's waiting for passage. Well, the, the new session starts later this year? Well, it, they're in their new session and they've recessed. At Christmas time, they recessed and the recess will go through till February the 4th. What had happened was the Speaker of the Ugandan Parliament, Rebecca Kadaga, had promised the Ugandan people that they would have the anti-homosexuality bill, other, otherwise known as the Kill the Gays bill, as a Christmas gift. It never came to fruition. Many reasons can, you know, one can say there are many reasons for that. I think it never came to fruition because there were other bills that got in the way, such as the oil bill and, um, you know, other stuff that was going on in the Ugandan parliament. But it's certainly coming back in 
at the beginning of um, February, it was on the first order of the papers, so on the agenda, it was number one for many days. So during that time, there was a lot of panic on the part of the people who would be adversely affected by it. Now, there was talk about um, taking out the clause of the death penalty, but you say that it's not true, or? It went to the Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. They make recommendations to the Ugandan parliament. It's supposed to go in for the second debate now, and apparently we're told that the if Legal Affairs Committee has recommended that they take out the death penalty. The death penalty is still in the bill, and one cannot report or say that it has been taken out until that bill is redrafted. And it has yet to hear, be heard in that second debate. It has yet to be heard and it has yet to be taken out. And it's important to note that the death penalty is in there for so-called aggravated homosexuality, uh, which means having intimate relations with somebody more than once. It could be that simple. Now, why should people here in the United States be concerned about this bill? It was the American evangelicals that conspired with the parliamentarians, especially David Bahati, in Uganda to bring an end to homosexuality in Uganda. And if you look at the language that surrounds this and the rhetoric, you will see that it's considered that Uganda will be a prototype, a prototype country for getting rid of the homosexuals. It will be a solution to homosexuality. They speak of homosexuality there as if it's a vice, as if it's something that can be procured, as if people can be recruited. And there's a lot of this misinformation that is allowed to stand if this bill is passed. In fact, this kind of language is actually in the bill itself. Of course we must be concerned because we've had an involvement in it and because this kind of thing spreads. But most importantly, these are our brothers and sisters. We are a global community. We have to fight this bill. It's just horrific. Melly Nathan, it's been a pleasure talking with you, and I'll see you at the next Marriage Equality Rally, like I always do. Thank you. Melanie Nathan's blog can be found on the web at oblogd, oblogda.me, and she can be reached at nathan at privatecourts.com. Coming up next, Pastor Tony Roberts. You're watching Outlook Video.